for my next review we're going to go back to 1985 for a game that is called 1985 the day after so here we have an early grid style Mastertronic release strangely enough this game was released in 1985 I think you probably could have guessed that uh, so we've got uh, an image on the front cover which is typical of this era it's a kind of space age bit of artwork there you've got the 199 games logo at the bottom there and the grid style on the spine and on the back we have the loading instructions inside got some screenshots which look pretty decent for the era and pretty brief aim of the game inside there it's the day after Big Brother has been destroyed that's Big Brother from 1984 hence the day after being 1985 I guess Big Brother has been destroyed, the Earth has learned how to survive on its own, you've been assigned to find the energy your planet needs to survive, blah 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 blah, using intricate controls on your small spacecraft, leave the space station, blah 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 blah, and we've got some controls which are rotate left and right, thrust and track to beam, this sounds like a gravitar thrust type control mechanism, and you can also use a joystick, and that's all for the inside of the inlay. Strange actually. It looks like it was supposed to have foreign language instructions printed there based on the flags, but it hasn't. So here we have the loading screen. A very, very big 1985 in the top left corner there. Uh, and a picture of the Earth and a big Massatronic logo and a kind of Jupiter lander type spaceship type thing. Not too bad for the era. So here we have the title screen, pretty unspectacular stuff, it says 1985 at the top, it's got the keys or joystick controls as is your preference, uh, you can also come back to this menu by pressing M, you can see the high score table by pressing H and you can see a demonstration by pressing D. One other thing to note is that this seems to be copyright 7 software from 1984, suspect they produced the game and then sold it to Mastertronic, that's usually the case with these small software houses back in the mid 80s so let's have a quick look at the demonstration in fact it started by itself so let's watch it so basically you're this little ship and the idea is that you've got to navigate through this tunnel which you can see it doing reasonably well at the moment and once you get out of the uh, initial takeoff area you fly to a planet and you've got to pick up these pink blobs that are sort of docked on the plane. You've got a tractor beam which you activate by pressing fire and away you go and, and uh, that's pretty much the aim of the game is to clear as many planets as possible and uh, move on to the next I guess. So let's get the game started. As you can hear there's some pretty terrible sound effects. It's not the prettiest looking game either. The graphics do the job, I suppose. <laughs> so basically, left and right rotate the ship. Pushing up gives it a little boost of the jet thrusters, which is quite a nice little uh, graphic, actually. A little fire coming out the back of it. And you can also press fire to activate the tractor beam. That's that blue thing. Let's try and get out of here a little bit quicker. So it's just a case of very carefully navigating out of this tunnel to get the game started proper and then flying into one of these planets like so and then picking up these pink things as already shown in the demo there you go that's one each one that you pick up gives you some points and also replenishes some fuel Controls can be pretty tricky, once you get some speed up you've got to be careful to adjust your inertia. It's quite a reasonable physics model in that respect. The more you thrust the faster you go. You also have to try and avoid bullets being shot at you by these uh, turrets in this particular stage. And there's another one collected. This one could be quite challenging because there's... Whoa that was close. There we go. Basically if you've played Thrust 
uh, which was released on most of the uh, 8 bit micros, or Gravitar in the arcade. It's pretty much the same plot. When you finished the uh, planet, got all the orbs, you're basically just flying up to the top of the screen and you go back to the uh, sort of hub, if you like, which lets you go to another planet and do exactly the same. Not the most interesting of games. As I've mentioned, the graphics are pretty run-of-the-mill. Not too bad for the era, I suppose, but nothing spectacular. If I didn't already know better, I'd have said this was a Darling Brothers game based on the quality of the graphics and sound and also a very familiar-looking scoreboard thing, albeit at the bottom of the screen rather than the top. Uh, but it's not one of their games, as has already been established. As you can see, um, I'm not doing too badly here at the moment. On each planet there's usually one pod that's a little bit trickier to get hold of. This one's in a bit of a cave down a chasm. The most annoying thing has got to be that beeping noise in the background. The sort of missile firing noise or whatever it is. That is horrendous and really high pitched. So I think that was the red planet I just did, was it? I'm not sure. Let's go again. The main thing you've got to do when, when each planet starts is get out of the way of the spaceship, the UFO going across the screen. That's probably the biggest issue. That was close. This one's quite a neat little level because you've got two things quite close together. You've got to make your way down this little gap here, which is not much wider than your spaceship. Oh, that's going to be close. Blimey, that was close. Oh, that was close as well. There's some uh, preciseness required. Good to see that the collision detection is pretty much spot on. Oops, as you can see there, I've crashed. Now what happens when you crash is that it throws you right back to the beginning. You have to navigate your way out of this tunnel again. Um, but any orbs that you've already collected remain collected. So uh, it's not a total loss. It is a bit annoying that you have to go through this bit every time though. crashed into the ceiling that time. So one life left. See how I get on. I don't think any need to replay is required. It was a bit of a waste of a life that I messed that up a little bit. Uh, I was hoping to try and clear all the planets and see what the, set, the next level looks like. Let's see how I get on. So I'm back on the green planet just trying to clear up the remainder of the pods on this one. This is probably the most tricky of the four planets on this first stage. Once you get used to the controls it is relatively straightforward unless you were uh, over thrust. That's usually the biggest problem, is not being able to get the craft back under control. Um, the graphics and sound are pretty bad, but it's not a bad little game really. I think it's probably worth $1.99. It's certainly challenging, and uh, any mistake you make is definitely your own fault, so you don't feel cheated really. Although the UFOs do sometimes get in the way when they could perhaps uh, not keep hovering over the surface quite so much. Well, that's uh, the green level completed and finally let's go to the yellow planet see if we can polish that one off this is probably the easiest of the the floor because all, all the orbs are pretty much just on the surface so if I can get this done then we might see what's on the next stage but I have only got one life left so any mistake is going to be punished with a game over Whoa. Okay, one more to get. You can actually fly out of a planet and then go back and tackle it again, which I think was the best approach there. 
You can see just one left to get. Let's see what happens. Oh, that's very close. Nearly there. Got it. Okay, so what happens now? I'm now materialised in some kind of a tunnel again. Quite nice, actually. Reasonably put together graphics. I've got no idea what goes on here. Can I fly to the surface there? No, it just resets me in the same place. Right, so basically I've got to navigate through this tunnel and try and uh, get that green pod, presumably. It's all going to be down to when these things shoot. This is quite challenging. Oh, I'm getting pretty close though now. All down to this last turn here. Am I supposed to pick this up with a tractor beam or what? Oh, now what? Now I've got to escape, presumably. This is all new to me, as you probably gathered. This is the furthest I've got in the game. I have actually only had three attempts. But yeah, overall, it looks like it's a fairly challenging game. Oh, that's bad news. Oh, that was close. Annoying sound effects. Really annoying sound effects. Oh, no! Disaster! I'll never find out what happened now, because I'm not going to play through it again. But I did get a new high score, and it's got a nice arcade-style high score table. So overall... It's a neat enough little game. I think it would have been worth two, uh, sorry, 199 back in 1985. And uh, I think that will sum that review up quite nicely. If you only knew the power of the dark side. Two. One. Zero.